This time around, let's rant about games that seem to think that they are immune to overmilking us. I'm not just talking about the type of overmilking that DLC does, right? I'm talking like uh, maybe too many releases. It may have been a little while, but remember Far Cry 3 came out? No, sorry, not Far Cry. Remember when Far Cry 5 came out? And then not a few months later, it was uh, Far Cry New Dawn, right? And surprise, surprise, they had like an 85 or 87% drop in sales compared to Far Cry 5. At this point, I think the audience knew that it was just Far Cry 5 with a different skin and a few additions to it. It basically was Far Cry 5 that they were trying to sell to you again. At a cheaper price to their credit, but it was still Far Cry 5. Yeah, and I'm just thinking, remember back in the day when a game came out and then you had to wait like five plus years for the next game in the series so you never got burnt out? Like, luckily, The Elder Scrolls still does that. Morrowind comes out and then many years later, Oblivion comes out. So after I've spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours on Morrowind, got myself burnt out, it's like, okay, I'm done. I'm not going to play this game anymore. I put it away. And then Oblivion comes out a few years after I burn out, and I'm like, sweet, let's do this again. I didn't play Oblivion nearly as long as Morrowind, let's be honest. But it, it was still fun, especially once I modded it. Oblivion was still good. But yeah, I played the shit out of that hundreds of hours, and then I put it down. Like, whew, I'm done. Then Skyrim comes out, and I get that. Same thing, play for hundreds of hours, get burnt out, stop, come back multiple times, install mods. Now, imagine if the Elder Scrolls were a yearly franchise like these AAA companies are trying to push out now. How many iterations of Elder Scrolls do you guys think you could go through before you got burnt the fuck out, huh? I know for me, if I was still halfway through being burnt out on Morrowind, and then uh, and then Oblivion just came out, and then I didn't even get halfway through Oblivion, uh, all the stuff I wanted to do there, and then Skyrim came out. I just put, even if I like it, I'll put it away. If there's not enough of a break in between games in a franchise, what I found for anyway is like three, I think. Yeah, three games in a row is about the max I can handle. Even if I really love the game, if I really love the franchise, the universe, the formula, whatever, three and I'm burnt out. That's what it was even with Pokemon. I haven't touched a Pokemon game since Gold and Silver because, yeah, I got too burnt out on Pokemon. And it's, it's not like they change the game around. In, but, I mean, they add more Pokemon. They add more moves. They change the graphics. But the game is still the same. So I got burnt out on Pokemon years ago because I was oversaturated with Pokemon. Yeah, these companies are just, again, like using Ubisoft as an example. Using that cheap cash in, the Far Cry New Dawn, right, right after Far Cry 5 came out, using the same assets and everything. Like, hey, let's just push something else out. Yeah, how, how did that work? How did that end up? How did that work out for him right there, man? It's pretty ridiculous. So, and again, this is actually, uh, this is a little bit different than the usual kind of milking we talk about, right? Like loot boxes, DLC, things like that. But uh, there is one occasion where you can actually put DLC into this category of milking I'm thinking of. And that would be when you talk about games like Senran Kagura, funny enough. Senran Kagura is the offender here. If you bought Shinobi Versus and you bought all the cosmetic DLC for that game, and then you buy Estival Versus, and it's pretty much the same game using the same models and the same everything, and then you have to buy all that same DLC again? How many people you think are going to do that? Why would I buy the same cosmetic DLC twice when I could just go back and look at it in the previous game? But apparently some people did. Again, these game companies... Even when they're not going full live service and choking each other, because I got to give Jim Sterling credit for this. He was dead on. The game industry is choking itself with live services. When you put out a live service, the whole point of it is to keep you addicted and keep you paying money. It's not fun. It's just addictive. And when you're already addicted to one, what's going to make you drop that and go to the other one? Especially when you have sunken costs to consider. You've already put so much time and money into this live service. Why are you going to leave for another one, right? And that's how they keep you trapped. So as time goes on, everyone's already trapped in one live service or another. So why would they jump to your new one? And very few new companies come up with, or very few new products come out that people want to jump to. 
And uh, yeah, the industry ends up choking. It's just a like a repeat of the MMO craze after World of Warcraft was just bringing in all the numbers and everyone wanted to be the next World of Warcraft or everyone is going to make the WoW killer MMO. How many of them are still around? Not very many. <laughs> it was just a sea of corpses and the occasional quasi-success. So yeah, there's that type of milking, but... But I want to do this rant to show that even with fucking single player, if you have a mostly single player game, even if it's not a live service, if you release it once a year or twice even in some cases, don't be surprised when people stop fucking playing because they're just going to get sick of it. They're going to get burnt out. Again, I'm from an era where you had to wait like five years or more for the next game in a series. So we never got burnt out. We were always hyped for the next game. But now, not so much. So, uh, just something to consider, game companies. Before you go and milk your cash cows to death, consider giving them some time to rest so in the long run you can milk them longer for a lot more money. But I understand. You guys don't give a shit about the long run, do you? You couldn't care less. You just want all the money you can right now because the second shit goes south... Everyone in an executive position can just deploy their golden parachute and leave. Whenever they want. So they don't care. But for anyone else out there who wants to actually make a lasting franchise again, don't do what AAA does. Do it the right way. Don't milk your damn audience to the point where they have no time, money, or patience for you anymore. And that's all I gotta say about that.